Coming up on Mountain News this morning, more than 125 million Americans are under wind chill alerts. And we will tell you more about new technology and hazard in Perry County aiming to keep schools and the community safe. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 632 on January 16th. Now let's check in with meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your cold, cold forecast this morning. Cold, cold, even colder tomorrow, Olivia. That is for certain. Check out the up-to-date uh, snowfall reports courtesy of the Weather Service Office in Jackson, Lamont. Again, these readings as of midnight last night. Seven and a half inches of snow your way. Pressensburg, five and a half. And in Hazard, five inches of snow. Temperatures as we wake up on this Tuesday morning in the teens region wide. And look at the pinpoint Doppler radar. Wasn't this active at three o'clock this morning? Go ahead and look from 64 in the Ohio Valley. As you make your way toward Hazard, things ease up toward Harlan and Middlesbrough, back toward London. But again, a few more snow showers and flurries your way as the drier air continues to build in, trying to get us back into some sunshine as we end up heading from the morning into the afternoon. A cold high today near 20, about 20, 25 degrees below where we should be this time of the year. Dangerous wind chills tonight. We'll detail it with the First Alert 70 forecast in a few moments. Olivia. Tim, thank you. And as we've been talking about dangerous bone numbing temperatures have a grip on much of the country this morning. The weather being blamed for at least a dozen deaths. More than 125 million Americans are under wind chill alerts. And the snow moves through the northeast and into New England today. CBS's Jared Hill has more from New York. This morning, an Arctic blast continues to blow across the country. Yeah, it's pretty cold. From Denver to D.C., where this city bus struggled to get up a slight hill, snow, cold, and strong winds are making it tricky to get around. Lake effect snow buried parts of western New York in a thick blanket, so much the Buffalo Bills paid an army of shovelers from the community to clear the stands ahead of their game Monday afternoon. That wild card playoff game moved from Sunday by the NFL and New York's governor, Kathy Hochul, in anticipation of the wintry weather and possible danger to fans. We all know as Western New Yorkers how dangerous the triple threat is. The triple threat of icy cold temperature with high winds and uh, the blowing snow. The extreme weather is also being blamed for leaving more than 100 million people in the dark. Mostly in Oregon, where winter weather knocked down power lines, Portland General Electric warned more wind and ice could delay the recovery. These are power lines that are wrapped around trees and branches that need to be disentangled and pulled apart. Keeping the lights on, also a concern in Texas. The state's electrical grid asked people to conserve energy with the potential for record lows. In 2021, winter weather caused a days-long power outage across the state. And in Moline, Illinois, the wind chill making it feel like negative 40, freezing the Mississippi River. The winter weather also wreaking havoc at the airport as crews work to de-ice planes on the heels of a holiday weekend. Meanwhile, here in New York City, just enough snow to break the city's snow drought. For the first time in more than 700 days, at least an inch fell in the city. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. The winter storm is breaking a snow drought in New York City, which hadn't seen over an inch or more of snow in more than 700 days. Yesterday, more than 9,000 flights within the U.S. were delayed and over 3,000 canceled. Senator Bob Menendez wants to go to trial alone in the bribery conspiracy case against him and his wife Nadine. The New Jersey Democrat is asking a judge to allow him to go to trial first. He says he doesn't want to be forced to choose between defending himself and testifying against her. They also say they may have to argue that any unlawful conduct, if there is any involved in the actions of others, like his wife Nadine, but not the senator. Menendez is not the only one asking for a separate trial. His wife is as well. The two are facing bribery and corruption charges for allegedly dishing out favors to other countries in exchange for perks. 
Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was released from Walter Reed Medical Center on Monday. It comes two weeks after he was admitted for complications following prostate cancer surgery. The Pentagon says Austin will work remotely for a period of time before returning to, to the Pentagon. He has full access to secure communications capabilities. Austin's hospitalization stirred controversy because of how long it took for officials to disclose it. He went in on January 1st, but President Biden didn't learn of Austin's diagnosis until the next day, just hours before it was disclosed publicly. The Pentagon's inspector general has launched a review into the matter. And back here at home, school and community safety is reaching new heights in Hazard and Perry County. And the Hazard Police Department is officially trained on their new FARO system. It's something HPD Major Zach Miller says puts the department ahead of many places here in the mountains and will help them better pre-plan for incidents at local schools and businesses. Keeping the community and the schools and everybody safe is our number one priority. Um, and this, again, is going to be something that we can use in the future for an extended period of time to be able to plan ahead um, in case of a worst case scenario. Miller says they plan to begin scanning Perry County schools this summer and will have 3D models in the hands of school board and first responders by the fall of 2024. And the importance of preparation is also being highlighted by Pike County officials from keeping emergency food and water on hand to finding alternative heat sources in the event of a power outage. Officials say the weather will be a week long worry and some preparations go overlooked. A lot of people don't think about those uh, vents under your block, closing those things off so you don't have that airflow underneath your homes. Make sure that you have your pipes insulated. Uh, if you have water hose still hooked up, go ahead and disconnect that when you get close to those single digits. Officials say you should stay home and off of the roads as much as possible, saying the roads will likely get worse before they get better. It's a first alert weather day on a Tuesday morning, waking up to temperatures in the teens, waking up tomorrow morning. These temperatures are going to be about 10 to 15 degrees colder. Check out the pinpoint Doppler radar. Things reignited over the last couple of hours in terms of widespread flurries and snow shower activity. As we go ahead and loop the data here, you can see how things have flared up. And the back edge seems to be working through central Kentucky. So we'll deal with the flurries and snow showers over the next couple of hours. Drier air back toward Illinois, extending toward Iowa, Missouri, and beyond. This comes in trying to get us to increase the sunshine from the morning into the afternoon. Very cold, though. A forecast high struggling to get close to 20. Wind chills below zero tonight. All the details with the First Alert 7-day forecast in a few moments. Olivia? Thanks, Tim, and thank you for joining us. The time is now 640, still to come on Mountain News this morning. Guardrails 